or it's in this unlikely setting that camp has been made for 31 young men who've come up from London, dedicated to improving their condition of mind and body in a rigorous Spartan routine that's unusual in this world of television and central heating. They are the men of Watford Football Club. The day starts at 7 a.m. Pat Molloy, the trainer, brings the camp to life with his own inimitable form of rebelli. And it's straight into a mountain stream, ice cold and glistening, for the wash and shave. <laughs> Breakfast is prepared by members of the 7th South West Heart Scout Troop, a group of 24 enthusiasts whose main aim is to please their heroes. Most of the players were a little apprehensive when they arrived at the camp. Even the younger men, like Dennis Bond, a highly valued England youth international, and John Williams, the 17-year-old left-back. But it's doubtful whether two newcomers, Bert Slater from Dundee, a veteran of European Cup campaigns, or Alan Williams from Oldham, an England under-23 cap, had any idea they were signing on for this rugged routine. Ken Fethy, Watford's energetic young manager, told me what made him go for this type of training. Well, during the two years I spent at Workington, we often took advantage of these uh, wonderful facilities that we find up here. And uh, whilst I was at Workington, we actually spent four days pre-season training here, which was at that time all we could afford. Mm. And I often felt that a longer stay would be more beneficial. What is the full idea of this type of training then? Well, the boys were told to be fit before they reported back for training, and uh, the boys are pretty fit. But this extra training in the hills, the fresh air and the togetherness and the comradeship that develops here is wonderful. And what, what, what different types of training have you used so far? Well, we've been fell walking. We've actually climbed Carlin Knot, which is about just over 1,700 feet. How long does this take? Well, it was only part of the training. Mm. We so went to the top of Carlin Knot, down the other side, and did a tremendous run right through the valley mm. to Buttermere. Mm. Had a cup of tea there and back again. It took us about four and a half hours. And how far is that? Well, about 13 miles. It's difficult to, mm. to judge really because you're going up and down. It's not as the crow flies. This is walking and running. Walking and running. Mm. Well, they had a rest after that run, which was about an hour. Too, didn't they? And then uh, Sammy Chung and Jimmy McAnini, the two staff coaches, mm -hmm. took the boys down the flat piece of field and we did yeah. ball work for about an hour. Yeah. Uh, what about the evenings? We have 11 o'clock curfew and uh, there isn't really anywhere to go from this particular spot apart from the local Kirk Style Inn. Mm. How is far a, is that? It's about two, two miles down the road. This team spirit and togetherness that you're building here, will this be infused into the team on the field, do you think? Well, I feel pretty confident it will. Uh, once again, whilst at Workington, the tremendous amount of travelling that they did, three days every other week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, developed a tremendous team spirit. Now, down at Watford, we only stay away from home, perhaps Three, three Saturday or Friday nights a season. So the boys socially never mix, very rarely anyway, only perhaps at a Christmas party. But this business of being together does help develop this team spirit. Hynook Farm is their base, but they visit most parts of the district, a morning practice match at Penrith, an evening trip to Keswick, or an afternoon on the sands at St. Bees. On the trip up the fell, the club are divided into three teams, and this inter-team spirit has surprised even super keen Ken Furphy. How do the older players like this open-air existence? One such man is Cliff Holton, just re-signed by Watford after five years away, and called the king by the younger players. Cliff, as an experienced player, how do you find this form of training? Well, it's a new experience to me. I think that uh, this is a type of training which will probably breed good team spirit. It's the sort of situation one finds oneself in. You all have to muck in together, make the best of it. I think all the lads here are doing that, and well, we're enjoying it reasonably now. We've settled in. When we first came here, we looked down and thought, oh my God, what have we let ourselves in for? And when we thought of bathing in the brook there, we thought, well, this is ridiculous, but quite frankly, we have enjoyed it. Do you think this would suit big clubs? I see no reason why not. What's the difference between a small club and a big club, really? I suppose they play a, a little bit higher class of football, possibly, and their individual skills are greater, but their basic fitness must still be the same. Mm, they tend to be a bit more sophisticated than what they do, though, don't they? Yes, well, the, I think possibly that uh, some of the bigger players, the star players, possibly wouldn't settle down to this. It's, it's an attitude of mind, I think, to a certain extent. Very 
Although the evenings are free, Ron Ferty has a strict curfew at 11 o'clock. Then it's time for a cup of cocoa and a sing-song before turning in. And the songs that echo round the valley are a warning to the football world in general, and the third division in particular, that Watford Football Club are enjoying their training. Training that could make them the fittest and the happiest club in England.